Hi, so for this tutorial, we had a request to show how to do uh, some real simple glass with a little bit of reflection um, from like an arch architectural visual style or maybe you brought a project over from Revit or, or whatnot. So uh, real quick, in 3ds Max, I just made this, uh, this little building here. It's just got uh, some glass, very simple, just square with some cutouts. Uh, it has some, some wraparound glass here. Um, Nothing fancy or, or particular, it's just real simple, straightforward. It's got a floor and some walls and some glass. Uh, so for the materials on this, um, I just set up a DirectX shader for Stingray. There's glass, wall, and floor. There's no particular settings on these necessarily. The floor is a little green. The glass, I didn't set to transparent. I just left it um, as it is. And then the wall is just uh, like an off-white color. So the next thing I want to do is uh, I've got a project in Stingray that I've already set up. I just used the basic project here and I just called it glass. Uh, and I've already imported this, but I'm going to re-import it so I can walk you through the process. I, I didn't set up my glass yet. So basically in this scene, I've just got my building on a floor and I, I just threw in some primitives and some colors and, and whatnot in here. So to send this to Stingray, you make sure you have it selected. You can do uh, Stingray uh, send all. You go into my content, I put this in the buildings folders, building effects, and save. Yes. And now in Stingray, this will have updated here my model. And if you didn't have this model there already, it would have just automatically imported for you. So my floor uh, material here is, is set up. It's got a little bit of reflective quality to it. And I also, in my shading environment here on the right, I have a turned on uh, screen space reflections. So you can turn those on or off and you can see the difference here that we add to our floor. I do have a reflection probe in my scene and I have set the size of it to fit the interior of my room so that my reflections reflect what's inside the room. So for my glass material, uh, right now it's just it's just gray. So I'm gonna set a base color here. I'm gonna make this dark, uh, almost black, and the next thing we want to make sure is, you can see here, it's, it's black on the inside, but not on the outside. So we want to make sure that this is two-sided. And we also want to make sure that uh, this can be uh, transparent. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the name here for the parent. We're going to start typing in transparent. And I'm going to select the standard transparent material. And you can change the opacity now. And you can see in my scene as I change that, that this will change. I'm going to leave it at one because I want to verify that I'm going to be at two-sided. To make sure this material is two-sided, we want to go ahead and say make unique and then open our shader graph. With our shader graph open, we're going to want to select the standard base. And on the right, you can see that there's back, front, none for double-sided, which is what we want. You can do an instancing or not. Uh, world space, transparent blend mode. You hit save now that we've got none for double-sided and this will go ahead and compile for us. So now that this is compiling you can see here in our scene that we are definitely two-sided. You can't see through the, the black glass at all. So if we uh, select our glass material now and we're going to change this opacity to let's say 0.8. So now we've got a uh, pretty transparent glass. My roughness at point 0.1 will control the reflections that I see in the scene. If I change this to 1, you see there's not no, no reflections there. So I'm going to leave this at point 0.1 so I can get some of these nice reflections that we've, we've baked in. Metallic, if you want even a more little shiny sheen to it, you could, you could raise that metallic level up to, to point 0.5 or even 1 if you wanted to. Of course, if you made this completely opaque and then change your metallic to 1, and your roughness to zero, you're going to get pretty much a mirror effect on the on the inside here if you change this color to uh, the base color from black to white. So you can see now we have this this kind of shiny mirror effect, which is not what we want, but of course uh, that's just showing you something different. You could set your opacity and, and use white, and now you've got these these crazy reflective sort of glass looking w windows, which which isn't really the effect that we want. So. I'm going to go ahead and change my base color back to a, a darker kind of blackish color. Maybe a little bit along the line of blue. 
I'm going to kill my metallic and make it lower and change my reflections there to about a 0.1. So make sure and save this material now that I've done these adjustments. And you can see in the preview here, it's, it's transparent, it's two-sided, it's got a little bit of a light reflection on it. As we zoom around our scene here, we've got this one light here in the center. We've just got some random objects in here. So you could bring this light down if you wanted to, change some of the way that the, the light is affecting things in the scene. You can do a lighting bake reflection probes. And that'll update the reflection probe here in your scene, depending on part where your light is. I'm gonna save this level. So you can see outside the scene, we have the, the main light here for the world which is going to adjust our outward shadows and movements and lighting. Basically our sunlight. And then of course we have our, our light in the scene here that we can you can change. You could add multiple lights in here if you wanted to. Uh, currently of course only have the one. You could make two. You might want to lower their intensity at that point. So say we have two lights in our room. And you could match these up with some mesh lights if you wanted to. However you wanted to set up your scene. So we got two lights in here. Let's save this level. Now that I have different lights in here, I'm gonna go ahead and bake this reflection probe again. So you can see how the whole lighting system changed here. And in my, my reflection probe, it's got the lights here, one, two, from each now light that I put in the scene. And you can see our windows also have a nice reflection from the world reflections as we go around. And then also inside, we get some good reflections here, as you can see, in the window from the room itself. And of course, all of these uh, reflections and probes and stuff can change depending on how many probes you use. Uh, whether you're doing an outside scene, whether you have uh, clouds in your scene or outdoor environment, of course, this is a very simple environment. That's a pretty straightforward way to set up uh, just real simple glass, bringing it in from, it, from any project. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and we can walk around. So now that I'm in my scene, I can walk into my world. As you can see, I look down, I get these nice uh, real-time reflections of the color here on the floor with the nice shadows. Of course, I didn't bake any lights in this scene, so this is very simple. This is just the normal real-time lighting. You get the nice reflections. You get the nice reflections in your glass here from your room. and on the floor as well. And as you go outside, you can see that our glass will definitely reflect and change what we're looking at on the inside. You could add uh, refraction and depth and all, all that stuff to your shader node if you want. But again, this is just a real simple way to set up some very, very simple glass and uh, how you can tweak some of those settings for your project and adding a reflection probe to make sure everything bounces correctly and looks cool. Thanks for watching and uh, I will attach this project for you guys and look forward to more tutorials.